At Flybe Energy, we are developing new generation molten salt reactors that operate on the thorium fuel cycle. Our reactors utilize a two-fluid design, which is made up of a fuel salt in the core and a blanket salt surrounding it. These two salts work in tandem to sustain the nuclear chain reaction while maximizing efficiency. This liquid fuel design has many benefits over the solid fuels used in today's reactors. One of the main benefits is that it produces an endless supply of new nuclear fuel via the thorium fuel cycle. To get a basic understanding of how this works, we will begin here at the moment of fission. When uranium fissions, it releases energy. But it also releases at least one neutron that gets absorbed by an atom of thorium. Once this happens, the thorium will decay into protactinium in about a half hour, followed by a decay to uranium in about a month. This new uranium will then fission, releasing another neutron that will get absorbed by another atom of thorium, continuing the cycle. This cycle will repeat over and over again, thereby creating endless energy from thorium. To fully understand how this works, we will need to dive deeper into the chemistry of the thorium fuel cycle. To do so, we will begin here with the atom of uranium. It has 92 protons and 141 neutrons. They add up to an atomic mass of 233. When uranium has either 141 or 143 neutrons, it has a special property. It is fissile. This means that it has the ability to undergo nuclear fission. Uranium bonds to other elements by sharing electrons. In a molten salt reactor, uranium gives up its four outermost electrons to four atoms of fluorine. This chemical compound is called uranium tetrafluoride. Tetra means four. And when fluorine receives an electron from another source, we call it a fluoride. This type of bonding is very common for fluorine. You probably brushed your teeth this morning with an analogous compound called sodium fluoride. When a slow neutron strikes the nucleus of fissile uranium, it sets up a situation that can result in a dramatic fission of the nucleus. Nuclear fission releases a lot of energy, mostly carried by the motion of the two products of fission, but additionally in two or three neutrons also released. These neutrons have so much energy that they're very unlikely to cause another fission until they slow down. We call this slowing down process moderation. And carbon, in the form of graphite, is a very good material to use to slow down these neutrons. Once they've been slowed down through moderation, neutrons are much more likely to cause additional reactions. For each fission event, we need to make sure that at least one of the neutrons that's released causes another fission and keeps the process going. But let's follow the other one. Another neutron needs to find an atom of thorium and be absorbed, setting off a process of change that will transform the thorium into a nuclear fuel. Common natural thorium has 90 protons and 142 neutrons, giving it an atomic mass of 232, making this thorium-232. But when it absorbs another neutron, its neutron count increases to 143 and it becomes thorium-233. However, it doesn't stay that way for very long. In the space of a half hour, one of its neutrons turns into a proton and it releases a high-energy electron. This is called beta decay. Now the nucleus has 91 protons and 142 neutrons, and it isn't thorium anymore. It's another element called protactinium. As protactinium, it is now chemically distinct from thorium and can be removed from the thorium salt mixture. Most of the protactinium formed in the reactor will decay to fissile uranium, but this process takes, on average, about a month. While we wait, it's important to keep protactinium away from neutrons. Otherwise, it can absorb some of them and decay into the wrong kind of uranium. To do so, we can use a simple electrolytic cell to remove protactinium from the salt. A very modest voltage source will drive the protactinium into a pool of metallic bismuth while extracting thorium from a sacrificial anode. This way, we can refuel the blanket with thorium even as we're extracting the protactinium. The fuel salt carrier that has been loaded with protactinium is then transferred into storage. 
It will remain in storage for several months, giving the protactinium time to decay to uranium. After the decay process is substantially complete, the fuel salt inventory is reintroduced into the reactor, thus refueling the reactor and allowing the entire operation to continue. As you can see, the thorium fuel cycle will continually create new nuclear fuel, thereby creating endless energy from thorium. But this is not possible with thorium alone. Uranium-233 is essential to this process, as the thorium fuel cycle cannot begin without it. Uranium-233 is key to realizing the full potential of thorium and creating an endless supply of energy for the world. To learn more about the thorium fuel cycle and FLIB energy, follow us on LinkedIn or visit us at FLIB.com.